the brand Best Art just sent me another package. This time it is a plasma cutter. So they asked me if I wanted to try out a plasma cutter and I said, sure, I don't have one, so let's give it a shot. So in today's video, I'm gonna unbox this and do a little bit of testing with it and I'll let you know what I think about it at the end. So stick around. Let's get this thing out of the box. I have not pulled anything out yet. Alright, looks like we got the unit itself and an accessories box. Inside the accessories box comes some tubing, a ground clamp, a 240 to 120 adapter, some hose clamps, a Teflon tape, and then the, the actual plasma cutting torch. Looks like it comes with a little guide which will probably be handy for me because I've never really used one before. Torch has a nice safety so you don't accidentally pull the trigger. And I kind of like this safety actually uh, because you can easily get your finger under the, the safety to get to the trigger. I don't like the ones that you have to pull to the side or flip up to get to or anything like that. So right off the bat, I'm kind of liking this. Um, time will tell if I like it after I use it. So this thing is very, very lightweight. I'm assuming it uses an inverter to create the, the plasma arc. Um, it looks like it's got a regulator on the front, some dial controls, and then these are your connections for your ground clamp and your torch. One thing I am noticing is that they give you this hose, but I'm not too sure what the hose is for. Um, if you look on the back of the unit, it has a quick connect coupling already installed, which will work good because that's what I, this is the same size that I use on my air system. So I have yet to review the uh, instructions on this, so I might look it up and just see if there's a specific purpose for this or if they're just including this for um, if you want to extend this or, or if you want to, I don't know, hook this to your air system rudimentarily. Rudiment terribly root I don't know if you want to make a rudimentary air system hooking this directly to an air compressor using this hose okay before I forget this is the model BTC 500 DP 10 gen they also package use the same box for a 9 gen I believe that the 9 gen is 220 only the 10 gen is 220, 110, switchable. Maybe the only difference is the inclusion of this adapter. Not entirely sure. Now the Best Arc welder that I reviewed earlier also ran on 220, 110, and I only ran it on 110 and it did great uh, just on regular wall power here in the United States. Um, I do have a 220 outlet. My problem is that I do not have this size of a receptacle or this shape of a receptacle for my 220 power which I you know I think it's 30 amps that it's supposed to be and I do have a 30 amp breaker on my 220 system but um, I'm not going to do, use the 220 setup I'm gonna see what this can do uh, in 110 and I'm gonna compare what they claim it can do with the 110 power versus what it actually can do with the 110 Okay, so it appears that this hose and these hose clamps and the Teflon tape are all just there in case you need it. But I obviously don't because I already have my air set up. In this package also comes some consumables. 
One concern that I have is the availability of these consumables. Usually what I have found, like with my Harbor Freight welder and with, this, with the Best Arc welder, is they use consumables that are manufactured or manufactured to the spec of other brands. So for example, my Harbor Freight welder uses Lincoln uh, welding tips. And so I'm expecting these consumables to also be um, available by other manufacturers. But I'm not positive on that. I have not done any research to that. At 110 volts, they claim that this unit will cut 3 eighths of an inch. I'm not sure I have 3 eighths of an inch. I know I have at least quarter. All right, so like I said earlier, I'm gonna take some time, put this together, make sure it's set up correctly, and then I will jump back in with uh, the demonstration of how the controls work. Okay, get this off. All right, we'll turn her on and see what it does. All right, so we got an error. Uh, it's probably maybe because it doesn't see air pressure. I don't have the air hooked up to it yet. I just wanted to go through a couple of this, the uh, controls here first before I get serious about cutting anything. So we have over here 2T, 4T, that's your trigger control. 2T is um, as long as you're pulling the trigger, it's going to make the arc. 4T is you click the trigger to turn the arc on, you click it to turn it off. On your PA and PT, is when you click this button, you'll see this number or this uh, screen over here change. Okay, so PA is your pilot arc time. So that's how many seconds um, you can fire, pre-fire the um, arc before you actually bite it into steel or whatever metal you're cutting. And then PT is how, how long the, the air continues to go through the unit after you're done cutting or after you release the trigger. So I've got a three second uh, post time and I have a three second pilot arc time. The air cut button, I think just tests your air. Um, and then, so you can have it like air mode, you pull the trigger and it just blasts out some air. Cut is actually engaging it to cut. You have plate mode and mesh mode. So as far as I understand, there's a difference between the way that the torch will act if uh, you're cutting plate or mesh. And so you turn it to mesh mode so it will behave in a way that the cut is not interrupted as you're passing through those empty voids through the mesh. Keep in mind, I do come into this review as an absolute beginner. I have never so much as operated a plasma cutter before in my life, let alone setting one up. So this will be an interesting adventure, but I'm hoping that by doing this, it will show to you how user-friendly and how beginner-friendly this is, if it is indeed beginner-friendly. The instruction booklet, I have to admit, does leave a little bit to be desired. It does not explain some of these functions, and it does not even kind of doesn't even tell you like why they give you the items that they give you uh, in the package. And it also references items that don't exist in the package, like a, a a wheel cutting guide. But they do give me this cutting guide, which should be good enough. Um, but it's just something worth noting. E05 does mean that there's no air pressure present. They gave me the list of errors that can show up on the screen. Um, so E05 is low or no air pressure. E02 is overheat protection and E01 is an overcurrent protection. So it, it's nice to have a little bit of feedback in case it stops working on you. Um, but that's enough chit chat. Let's get some air hooked up to this guy and let's start cutting some metal. All right, before I get started cutting with this thing, I'm gonna do that outside. I'm getting prepared out there. This is a wood shop, lots of sawdust and everything in here. I don't think, generally speaking, any type of welding or cutting is not very uh, safe thing to do inside here unless I completely clean out the area. But since I primarily do woodworking in this shop, 
Um, I generally don't do any hot work inside this side of the shop. I've got a third bay to my garage over there. And if I need to work under shelter, I usually go over there when the wife uh, is not parked there. Let's go over some PPE real quick. Um, some protective equipment that you're going to need uh, to do this type of cutting. Uh, first of all, you're going to be blasting a lot of sparks under the ground, so some nice leather closed-toed shoes uh, would be helpful. I've got some long pants on. These are cotton, so they're a little bit more fire resistant than anything that's synthetic. Um, you're going to need something to protect your eyes from the UV blast or the UV light that's generated. They recommend any type of a shield 5 or higher. Um, this is an adjustable, so I can get it down to a shade 5. Uh, you'll probably need some gloves, something to protect your hands as you're doing the cutting. Even though I wear glasses, I do prepare, prefer to wear safety glasses as well underneath the welding hood because more often, most of my uh, close calls I've had with my eyes have been while I'm welding and I've had things jump up underneath the hood and bounce around inside there. Even though I'm wearing glasses, they don't protect me because they don't have side shields. And as an added measure, I'm going to wear a leather apron. I think this is optional, but it's definitely a good idea and they're cheap and they're a good investment for any type of hot work. So now I'm going to take a table out there set up. I've got a couple of items I'm going to try cutting. I've got some 16 gauge here. I got eighth inch angle and then I've got this quarter inch tube. I'll go ahead and attempt to plunge on this quarter inch tube as well. These are all techniques that I've never done before so I have no experience. So we'll see how easy it is to just jump right into plasma cutting. Okay so here's my setup. Now using a wooden table is not ideal obviously but I don't have a steel table. So this is all I have to work with, and this table is junk anyway. I actually only use it to weld on. That's why you can see maybe how burnt up it is. If I wasn't using this for welding, I would probably throw this table out. I'm outside of my driveway. Yeah, there's a little bit of dead grass around, but that's no big deal. I've clamped this piece of 16 gauge to the table with the ground clamp. I've attached the air. I don't know how this works uh, as far as what it allows you to have, but you know, I'm hooked up to 110. And another non-ideal situation is this 25 foot extension cord that I'm hooked to. It would be better if you were closer to the outlet with the shortest run of cable possible. Anyway, I can go as low as 15 amps and it only allows me to go as high as 35, but you know what, I'm, I'm on the mesh setting. So let me switch over to plate. Still, it only allows me to go as high as 35. According to the chart here, on this chart, it says I should be able to go to 40 amps to get 5 sixteenths. And then in the manual, it said 45 amps to cut 3 eighths. But I'm limited. Uh, and I don't know why I'm limited. I tried increasing the air pressure and it didn't uh, increase the ceiling at all. Um, so I'm not sure uh, what it is. It's probably a situation where this is it. This is all you get at 110 volts. I know I can get higher amperage if I switch over to 220, but for the purposes of this review, I'm only going to run it on 110 uh, power. So I'm going to get suited up, put the camera in a good position to capture this, and I'm going to cut. One thing I did want to note now that I have air pressure is that when you do press this button to switch to air, it literally just blows air out just so you can make sure that your path is clear or that you're getting the right amount. You can feel the right amount of flow coming out. Okay, I have the cutter set to 20 amps and I have the air pressure set to 45 psi. We're going to see how well this cuts on these settings. This is just 16 gauge. It's very thin.
I'm sure I could turn that down. That's because that's got some pretty heavy slag on the back side. So let me try turning it down all the way to 15 amps. To see if I can get a cleaner cut. Try one more time. I'm realizing that it's not only the power and the airflow, but it's also the speed at which you move the torch. All right, that went a lot better. Pretty clean cut. There's still some slag lift over I don't know how avoidable that is going to be so let me switch over to the eighth inch now and uh, see how that does okay this is eighth inch steel I'm set to 25 amps still have 40 psi air pressure Let's see how it goes Pretty much a piece of cake. Once I dial in my technique, it should be better. But so far, so good. That was pretty effortless. Um, the cut's okay. Uh, again, I, that's gonna just come with time and practice, I think, getting a better cut. But there's a lot less slag this time around on the backside, so that's good. Easier to clean up, I guess. So with that done, let's go ahead and move to the quarter inch uh, tube here and see if I can't cut this guy in half and then maybe do a plunge on it. Okay, the plasma cutter is set to 30 amps. Air speed or air pressure is still the same. So I'm going to see if I can't cut through this. I tripped my breaker, which was expected, especially running through that long extension cord. Let me go untrip it. All right, I'm back. Pretty good cut. Uh, there is lots of slag underneath on the underside of the cut. It went through all the way, um, but as you saw, it drew enough. I think there's just enough resistance going on um, with the power cord and everything that I ended up tripping my breaker. I think if this was plugged directly into the wall with the short cable that it comes with, I think it would be okay uh, at 30 amps. I could still go up to 35 and these are 20 amp breakers that this it's a 20 amp breaker that this is attached to so it's not like it's a 15 amp breaker. Let me go ahead and try to do a plunge real quick and then if I can I'm just going to call it at that point. All right piece of cake. All right I'm going to clean up here and then I'm, I'll go ahead and take you back into the shop and we'll recap. Uh, everything. Alright, so let me recap my experience with this Best Arc BTC 500 DP plasma cutter. As an absolute beginner, I think it worked out great. 
um, I was able to follow the instructions, hook it up, and just start cutting metal. Um, the cuts were not very clean, and I attribute that 100% to my lack of experience. And I think with proper technique and with dialing this machine in even more, you'll be able to get really clean cuts. Um, I only ran this at 110, and so I was only able to cut up to a quarter of an inch. I, and that was not at full power. Um, I limited myself by running this on an extension cord, but if this was plugged into the wall, um, I have no doubt that it could cut a 3 8 of an inch plate um, on a 110 volt outlet, no problem. 20 amp breaker, that's one big thing. Most homes only have 15 amp breakers in them, so um, this will not be able to run 35 amps um, on the output of the machine on a 15 amp breaker. It will trip your breaker. So that's something to keep in mind. Now knowing what little I do about electricity, I know that if I did hook this up to 220 on a 30 amp breaker, it would give this a lot more available current and I should be able to reach what they claim is 25 millimeters. That may be a stretch. Um, and that is at 80 amps output. Um, with a 70 PSI air pressure. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past it. Uh, I'm not in a position to test that. There really was no indication, nothing in my testing that would indicate that it would struggle to achieve that. And these are the conservative numbers. The, the more ambitious numbers are found in the manual, which says, well, actually, let me just stop right here. So this is really where the problem lies with this machine. And the only problem I see with this machine is the inconsistencies in the, the messaging between what's on the machine, what's on the Amazon listing, and what is in the manual. On the machine, it says you can cut up to an inch thick uh, at 220 volts, and that would make it um, 80 amps output. As we could see with the 110 setup, it claims it can get up to 40 amps on the machine, on the label on the machine. In the book, it claims it can get up to 45 amps. But as you saw in my testing, I could only get it up to 35 amps on the output. So there's inconsistencies there. On the label on the machine at 110 volts, it says that I can only cut up to 10 millimeters. But in the book, it says I can cut 3 eighths at 45 amps. 10 millimeters and 3 eighths is actually pretty much the same number. So at least that matches at 220. It's like I said, it only says uh, 25, well, it says 25 millimeters at 80 amps, but in the book it says 9 sixteenths at 55 amps. So if I were to hook this up to 220, I don't really know what the maximum output this actually is designed to put out. It could potentially go up to 80 amps and cut one inch thick material, but I seriously doubt that. My guess is it's limited probably to about 50 or 60 amps on the output which is close to about double the output at 110 volts. And the limited knowledge I have about electricity makes that true. When you, when you double the voltage, you also double the available amperage. So let's answer my questions. Is this a good budget plasma cutter? I would have to say yes, 100% yes. For the price, um, the cost of entry is so low that if you needed a plasma cutter, I think it would be really easy to justify getting this plasma cutter, especially if you're doing mostly sheet metal or anything under a quarter inch. The other question was, is this a good plasma cutter for beginners like me who have never used a plasma cutter before? And I, I feel like I've demonstrated that it is because I just followed some very basic instructions and set it up and I was cutting. and. And like I said before, the quality of cut is wholly dependent on me and my technique. But the fact that it just cut with no problems um, tells me that this is great for beginners. So that's my review of the Best Art BTC 500 DP plasma cutter. It's a great plasma cutter for the price. It's a great plasma cutter for beginners. The only gripe I have is that the documentation could be a little bit better. And the numbers between all the sources of documentation could match a little bit better. It could, it could be more consistent because uh, there is a lot of guesswork involved and they do get you in the ballpark with their numbers, either set of numbers. 
but it would be nicer um, if they told you what the actual maximum capacity of the machine is um, and not have to figure it out once you plug the machine in. I'd like to thank Bestark for sending me out this example unit to use and they're going to let me keep it. I'm not being compensated for this review. My opinions are all my own. I have not been coached and they have not told me any points to use in this video. If you are interested in picking up your own Best Arc plasma cutter, you can follow the links below in the description and they will take you to a listing where you can click on a link, find out more, and potentially buy your own. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.